Is it time to let it go? Today, we discuss the important but difficult work of deciding when it's time to delegate, outsource, or just stopping something altogether. Hey there, Church Communicator. Welcome to the Church Juice Podcast, where we are energizing church communications one 20-minute episode at a time. I'm Brian Haley. And I'm Jeanette Yates, and we're here to give you the communication tools and resources to help you thrive, no matter your title or role. That's right. I loved your intro, by the way. You were so animated today. I am energized about church communications. We spent a lot of time talking about getting things done, right? But sometimes it is time to let it go. Or sometimes we need to learn how to delegate. So today we're talking a little bit more about delegating, about outsourcing, or even stopping some of those projects that church communicators have to do on a regular basis. So I'm excited about this conversation because, like you said in the intro, Jeanette, like this is a difficult conversation to have sometimes, especially if you're part of a team, like you're not just doing everything yourself. But it is important and it does help us grow professionally. It helps our ministries, but knowing when to, to delegate something, when we need to do it ourselves, when we need to outsource what that looks like, or even when we need to stop something. So let's dive in. So the first thing I think we decided that we wanted to talk about is like, how do you even know where to begin with delegate? Because in order to know what to delegate, you actually have to know what you're doing. <laughs> like what are, like, you know, there's a lot on your plate, but when was the last time you actually wrote it all down, organized it? And so that is the first thing that is going to need to happen is organizing your projects, your tasks, and what your capacity is as well. So uh, we've talked about this before on the podcast. I think sometimes I remember the name of it and sometimes I don't, but this time I did. I was the one that brought it up to you, Brian, the Eisenhower right. matrix. This is a great yeah. way to organize your tasks. So refresh everyone's memory if they don't remember yeah. the Eisenhower matrix. I can do that. So the Eisenhower matrix is something that I use from time to time. If you're like a, a whiteboarder, you know, like you like to write things out on the whiteboard, which is, I love doing that. The Eisenhower matrix is a good, just visual way to organize all of the things that, that uh, you need to get done. That's all those things that are in your head, just get it out there. And basically you split your board or your paper into four quadrants. The top left is important and urgent. So those are things that you need to do. The top right is important, but it's not urgent. So it's something that you can schedule to do later. The bottom left is something that you can delegate. It's urgent, but it's not necessarily important for you to do it yourself. And then the bottom right is what I call delete it or drop it. So it's not urgent. It's not important. We can, we don't need to schedule it because it's so far out or it's just not something that needs to be on our radar right now. So We'll link to the Eisenhower matrix so you can kind of get a better idea of what that looks like. But it's something that I use, just kind of putting things like, where does this need to go in my head and in my space? Do I need to take care of this right now? Is it urgent and is it important? Is it something that I can schedule for a week or two or six months from now? Is it something I can delegate or is it something that I can just drop? Maybe it's a pet project that I like or an idea that I have, but it's just not important and I just don't have the time for it. Um, so it's a good way to prioritize all that kind of stuff. Another one that you talked about that that you use, Jeanette, is another method that I think people might find maybe even simpler than uh, a matrix, but it's stop, start, continue, right? Or start, stop. Well, the way keep. we did do it at where I work is I, we call it the SSK. So the start, stop, keep. What are you going to start doing? What are you going to stop doing? What are you going to continue doing? And then some of those things that you are going to continue or start, you may have to delegate, right? <laughs> but this is a great way to figure out, because one of the things we are going to talk about as we go through is some of the things that you're going to have to stop. So it's a great, just like a, this is almost maybe pre, pre your Eisenhower matrix or post your Eisenhower matrix where you just sit down and say, okay, what of these things do we need to continue doing in any capacity, whether they're urgent and important or important but not urgent? What are we going to start doing? What are we going to stop doing? What are we going to continue doing? And that really helps our team to decide, like, well, we had this great project that we worked on. It was successful, but we, you know, 
So does that mean we want to do it again, continue it? Or is it something that we want to take a break from and come back to later or something like that? So it's a great way to just kind of assess where you you have been and what you have been doing and decide if you want to keep doing it. And of course, both of these things need to be, you know, hopefully the, all this all is not all on your shoulders, right? That you're not the only one looking at the Eisenhower matrix or start, stop keeping. You are coming with your team, your pastors, your other ministry leaders, and and looking at this as a holistic piece saying like, okay, we have ministries, communication tools, all of these things. What do we need to start, stop, keep? What's important? What's urgent? What's not? That kind of thing. And it's always good too, if we're trying to figure out like all the things that we need to do, spending time to evaluate is something that we talk about too. So another thing that we've talked about before at Church Juice is do is doing a review after uh, an event or after Sunday even. So just spending time to review that. So I'll link to that. I don't think we need to really talk about it, but it's a good thing to do from time to time. And really just being able to organize all of the projects that you have going on, all of the tasks, and figuring out just where your time and energy needs to go. One thing that I think is important, and this is one of the topics that we t- said we were going to talk about, is delegating. Most church communicators that I know, myself included, are pretty terrible at delegating. And I can say that because I am, and I recognize how terrible I am at it. But the reality is, for me and from what I hear from other people, it's easier to do it yourself than to train somebody to do something or to try to figure out who you could delegate this to, and then it creates more work, right? But delegating is so important because when we can empower and equip other people to do the work of ministry, the 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 ability of ministry just tenfold. It just expounds because it's not limited to your time and your ability. So delegating is important. Yes. I think, you know, one of the things, like you said, it's easier for us to do it. That's why we just do it because we want to just do it, get it off the plate, <laughs> you know, just moving on. But remember, chances are, I know this is my the case for me as a church communications director. I didn't know anything stepping into that role. I was filling in for somebody. I was, you know, kind of like just doing it to be nice. Like I didn't really have, other than writing a blog, I didn't have any experience. And so I had to learn all of the things. And so if you're capable of learning something, chances are someone else is as well. So yes, just like you had to learn it, someone else is going to have to learn it. But it's okay to ask somebody to learn something new. Some people like it more than others. I'm a learn like I love learning new things. Some people not so much, but if they are in a place where they can help you, they want to help you, then, you know, exploring that possibility of giving them a little bit of training and then also giving them the tools to continue to self-train. Like you don't have to be even the person that trains them all the way through. And I think it's so important and as my mother-in-law always would tell me, Sometimes you say no so that someone else can say yes. And so I think another reason, if we're honest, that we don't want to give up what we're doing is because we think we we can do it better than, you know, like it's— Or we don't like to say no. Or we don't like to say no. And so I think <laughs> that, you know, this is also an opportunity in faith or or trust that— what is needed will be provided, right? And so my mother-in-law always tells me, if you say no, that allows, that opens the door for, you know, for someone else to say yes. God's been calling someone else into this. Let them say yes. And so that always gives me a little bit of like less stress to think about. Like someone (laughs) is waiting to do this, Jeanette, just say no. (laughs) And you really hit on this, I think, really well. But the long-term benefits of investing a little bit of time in somebody so much better and it far outweighs that that investment that you need to make right now because if you teach someone right now today this week how to use canva or the basics of canva not even just the details like think about how much more work they can do in the long term so an hour a day of your time just the benefits there when you actually get someone on board to help you to support you that you can delegate to over time you'll trust them more and one other thing that we talked about too is starting small starting with something easy right because if you give someone an entire outreach event marketing plan that's a huge undertaking and that's something that i would have a hard time handing off to even if i was told to but 
if we start with a small task, hey, can you do this one flyer for me? Or can you, you know, whatever it is, can you make a social media post? If we start small, we start easy. That helps to build trust among the volunteer or the team or whoever it is. It helps you kind of build that confidence that you can trust people and that you can delegate And that momentum helps you delegate even more too. Right. And I was reading an article in preparation for this episode and it talked about that, you know, basically, unfortunately, delegation is just something in order for you to get better at it. Like you can, (laughs) we're glad that you're listening to the podcast today, but unfortunately the best way to get better at delegating is actually to do it. And so when you start with something easy and practice, practice, you're building up that that delegating muscle, I guess my fitness, my fitness background is coming here a little bit, but you're developing that ability to delegate and then you can do it with things that are bigger or harder for you to delegate. Yeah. And if someone is coming to you and says, Hey, how can I help you? Like before we started recording, Jeanette, you and I were talking about a conversation that you had with somebody where someone came up to them, offered to help. And that communicator, that communications person was like, I could use help with my laundry, right. but <laughs> my communication stuff, that's kind of my area. Yeah. But if there's if there are people who are asking you how to help, find a place for them. Yes. That's a huge way to build your volunteer team, to build your impact in ministry, the way that you can shepherd people, the way that you can invest in people. So if you have volunteers, invest in them, find a place for them. And that's where delegation comes in huge, I think, too. Yes. All right, so not everything can be delegated. Sometimes we don't have the skills or the people to delegate projects to. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it is better to outsource. But that can be a difficult conversation to have with the people who approve spending money (laughs) sometimes, right? It's not always easy to say, hey, we've been doing this in-house for ever Mm -hmm. since the start of the church. We've been making our own bulletin but I don't have the time or I don't have the skills or we just don't have the resources for this. So we need to pay X amount to have someone else do it. That's a, that's a tough one to choose sometimes, but outsourcing can have a lot of benefits too. knowing when to outsource or how to outsource is, is always a, a difficult, but important conversation to have and realizing where your needs and skills and lack of skills or people, that's important. And so outsourcing should be an option. And honestly, even, you know, even if, you know, a lot of times it's the budget is the issue, right? It's like, we're going to go spend money where we weren't spending money before. But remember that your time is money. And so if you're spending, having to spend all day, because I know I've talked about this on this podcast before and others, like I will mess up a Canva template if you give me enough time in there. I will just mess it up. I can't, like, I will get, try to get too creative. So I end up spending a lot of time either getting sidetracked or playing around or messing something up and having to fix it when someone else could literally do it in five minutes, which opens me up to do other ministry communications things, right? And so, you know, sometimes you have to spend money elsewhere so that you are taking that off your plate so that you can do other things Maybe if you're start, stop keeping, maybe if you're starting something, uh, something else can be there. Or, you know, maybe you could just spend more time on the thing, on blog writing or other things that, you know, that your church finds valuable in the communication space. So, you know, I think also that that's something to think about too, is it's going to end up saving money a lot of times if you think about it and how your time is also money and how they're paying you. But if they, <laughs> you could do a, get a lot more done if you weren't, you know, sidetracked in camera like I am. Yeah, it's it's a hard, outsourcing is a hard topic because it is a, an upfront cost that's very visible. Whereas your time or volunteer times, the software, the whatever, like that's a little bit more hidden. So it's a little bit harder to say, you know, the, the, the balance here is really much more like in our favor when we do this, uh, or it's really more cost effective to do that. But a good time to really introduce the idea and advocate for outsourcing something is if you guys are starting something new at your church, because that's a good time. Or when you start looking at budgets or you start looking at even like your performance, if you do like an annual review or, hey, these are areas that we've talked about starting I don't have the time to do that, but if I outsourced this area, it would free up this amount of time where I could do this. So yeah, so I think that knowing where those opportunities are, really advocating for the value of it, what is the value? If you're going to outsource something, 
what's the value? Where is that benefiting the church and how is that benefiting the church? Let's talk about very quickly just a couple areas that are easy to outsource or commonly outsourced. The first one that comes to mind that you've mentioned, uh, Canva, yeah, but well, graphic design yes. overall. Yeah. Uh, graphic design is is a skill that, that a lot of people go to school for. They yes. have an education for this. So Canva makes it easy for common people to design, but that doesn't mean that it's our skill set. Right, right, right. So that's an easy one sometimes, and it doesn't have to be very expensive either. Right. And outsourcing too can be sometimes like this goes back to that delegate. Maybe like you do have Canva and maybe there is someone in your church that loves Canva and does it all the time for their their Instagram page. And, you know, and it's like maybe, you know, that's a volunteer position or maybe you outsource and say, we're willing to pay you you know, to just use our Canva or pay a, you know, a designer that uses their own design tool, you know, like that's something to consider. But then the second thing, and this is something I think more church, more communications directors might want to lean into. I think this is something, it's probably the last thing to be delegated, but I think social media management, now it requires you to have, we've talked about this recently, you know, the content calendar and all that kind of stuff, you know, it requires you to have a little bit of of organization of what you're communicating in order to outsource the social media management. But think about how much you could get done if sitting there and scheduling and all of that kind of stuff was not part of what you were having to do. So I think that's something to that maybe, you know, in 2024, we're going to we're going to start uh, getting more people to do uh, to outsource their social media management. A common thing that I talk with church communicators about is website design or website management. There are tons of tools that make it easy, just like graphic design and Canva or Adobe Express or whatever. There are a lot of things like the Church Co. or Squarespace or Wix that make uh, web design easier, but that doesn't mean it's your skill set. Or it may take you two and a half days where it would take someone who really knows web design <laughs> five minutes. Right. Yes. <laughs> like it's hard to figure these things out sometimes. I do want to say there are a lot of good resources in this website space for churches. So okay. there's, I, you know, I'm not familiar with too many social media management companies that are specifically for churches, but we, there are quite a few that do website design for churches. And I think that's something that's really comforting is there are people that are, Building websites for churches, understand the mission of the, you know, the C, big C church are, you know, have designed templates and websites that are, you know, help churches get the right things in the right place, you know, so that you have. And so, like you mentioned, the Church Co. and others as well. But I think that that is something too, you know, I know churches that have spent tens of thousands of dollars on a website that just sat there for years because they had somebody build them a website from scratch. And then they said, okay, well, here's your website. And then they were done with their job, but nobody knew how to update the website. <laughs> and so it just got clunkier and chunkier and less and less usable and all that kind of stuff. And so that's not what you want, but there's a lot of people out there that are helping churches with affordable tools and that can really help you. No, I think those are good points. One thing that I want to say as we kind of wrap up this first or these first two sections on delegating and outsourcing, the difference between delegation and outsourcing. Delegation is something that a you could do, but you realize that your time or you have people that can do this and so you can give it to someone else. Outsourcing means I don't have the skills, I don't have the time, I don't have the resources, or I don't have somebody I can delegate to. So we are going to pay somebody or contract somebody to do this project, this task for us. Um, so those are uh, an important difference, um, but it is kind of a small, like, well, you're handing it off either way, right? Stopping something that we've done for a long time is difficult. Even stopping something that we started because you just put a ton of resources, your time and energy into creating this thing and realize that it doesn't really work or it doesn't work for your audience. And so stopping is a difficult area to, to have conversations with. And for church communicators, often 
we aren't the ones that are making the decisions to start or stop something, right? But within your area of ministry, we can have those conversations about what we can start, what we can stop, because you also have time. You also have boundaries, I hope. So realizing that and getting with your team to talk about, you know, I have seen this. This is something I've observed. I think it might be time for us to have a conversation about the value of this thing, whatever it is, ministry or even way of communicating or whatever. Let's have a talk about the purpose. Let's have a talk about mission alignment. Is this achieving what we're trying to do? And is it achieving success? Have we even defined what success for this is? So I talk with a lot of church communicators who would love to stop something, a way of communicating or a ministry that we've done for 13 years, but it's the same 17 people that come to it. Being that person that's willing to step into the space and have the conversation can really be fruitful and helpful for your ministry as well. Yeah, and remember, sometimes you you won't be the closer of that deal, but you can be the one that starts the conversation. It may, it may be some one of those things that you have to have the conversation for years and years, but you can start it and plant those seeds, and hopefully, hopefully, the decision can be made in a way that that moves the mission of your church forward. One more thing I did, we did talk about before we hit record was that sometimes we delegate things that we don't wanna do when really we should just stop them. Like, (laughs) so that's another thing to keep on your radar as you start delegating things. Make sure it's something that still needs to be done before you delegate it. Because what you don't want is to ask somebody to do something that then it doesn't get used because it's not important and it's not urgent. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my goodness, that was a lot of stuff that we talked about today. That is, and we have a lot of links yes. <laughs> uh, to include in the, the show notes. So make sure you check out the episode description or the show notes for today's episode, and we'll link to a lot of what we talked about today. Before we go, though, I do want to mention, if you haven't already joined, we are starting a virtual, an online book club this week. We're reading through Kem Meyer's book, Less Chaos, Less Noise. So check out the book. Check out the book club. Uh, We're going to meet throughout the month of November. I would love for you to be a part of those discussions as well. So we'll link to that in the episode description as well. I love that book. I might have to hop onto this book club myself, Brian. Uh, It's a good one. It's a good one. All right. On behalf of Church Juice and everyone at Reframe Ministries, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.